Welcome to the dispatcher's office of my model railway, the N-Scale Kootenai Division. I model CP's quiet and remote secondary mainline in the southern interior of British Columbia. Out of the way in lightly traffic, they were home to many archaic practices and equipment types that stuck around here much longer than on the rest of CP's system. Running by a timetable is one of the earliest forms of train control. A fixed timetable is one of the simplest way to control train movements, with the train not allowed to leave any station before its scheduled time. This, of course, does not allow for any deviation, which is fine, because nothing ever goes wrong on the railway. However, before wireless communication was invented or implemented, it became necessary to devise a way for the dispatcher to communicate with train crews. Now remember, back in the day, every city, town, hamlet, municipality, large clump of bushes would have a train station. Some of these would be designated as train order stations, where an operator was on hand to take orders transmitted from the dispatcher, which he would then take down on forms and relay to the train crews. These orders would be on little pieces of paper, which he would tie to a hoop and pass up to them as they flew by. This persisted into the late 1970s due to the few trains running and the remote nature of it before a radio network was finally put into place on the Nelson and Boundary subdivisions. On the N-Scale Kootenai Division, there are seven stations designated as order stations. However, I do not have either the space or the number of friends required to have seven-man positions to take down orders and give them to the train crews. Because of that, I've cut out the middlemen, and the dispatcher talks directly to the train crews where they stop to take their orders. Let's take a look at the timetable. Now this is the timetable that everyone on my railway has a copy of, from the train crews to the dispatcher to the yard crews. It has everything you need to determine your authority to run as a train. In the stations column, there are distances between each station. That allows you to decide if you can reach the next station using your expected speed. The column also contains an alphabetical notation of facilities, such as water towers, yard limits, and whether there is a train order operator at that station. To the left are two columns, miles and scale miles from the start of the subdivision. Miles are the actual distances from real life, and only exist to give you an impression of how far things are IRL. Scale miles are the actual run in scale miles, but multiplied by the fast clock factor. That allows you to calculate if you can make it to the next siding using your expected speed without having to worry about the fast clock screwing things up. Moving to the right, there's the siding capacity, which is calculated in average length cars. Add up all the cars on your train, add the caboose and locomotives, and if you have more than this number, you're probably not going to fit. Each train on the timetable has its own column. Westward trains are on the left side, and you read down the column. Stations are organized from the top to bottom, east to west. Eastward trains are on the right, and you read up the column. You are not allowed to leave any point with a time before the time indicated whether there is a siding at that location or not. 11 and 12 are passenger trains, and they have extra notation. S represents a 10-minute station stop, and F represents a 5-minute flag stop, but only if there is someone getting on or off at that point. Now, the timetable does not take into account all movements. There are trains that will have to run extra. These are movements that are authorized by the dispatcher, but don't have a scheduled time. The rest of the timetable is full of little footnotes, such as the speed restrictions on the layout, which are also posted in yellow signs on the fascia, the key to the alphabetical notation on the stations, various other instructions that you may read if you don't feel totally overwhelmed already, and a handy little cheat sheet with the most important rules from the Uniform Code of Operating Rules 1962 edition, which is what we use. Oh, hold on, I've got some copies. Here we are! So in case you want the whole book, I've got a few kicking around. Now, all of that is a lot to take in, so I'll do a simulated run in a bit to show you exactly how everything works together. But first, let's take a look at the dispatcher desk. It's the 1970s, so everything is kept track of on paper. The dispatcher keeps track of train locations on the train sheet. It includes both subdivisions and room for 14 trains in each direction on each subdivision. When a train calls in from a station to OS, this is the sheet which it is on. There is also a book to keep track of train orders issued and clearances. These are written down exactly as they are relayed over the phone. The dispatcher will also have a daily lineup that includes mode of power, expected train lengths, and departure times for all trains, including extras. The only electronics in the dispatcher's office are the phone system and the order panel. The order panel sets the signals at the stations which have train order offices. In real life, these would be set by the station operator when the dispatcher notified them they were to receive orders, but this duty is taken over by the dispatcher. On to the scenario. In this scenario, we're looking at the Nelson subdivision. It is 12.20 p.m., and two trains are getting ready to run between Cranbrook and Nelson in opposite directions. Sitting in Nelson, number 90 has a scheduled departure time of 1300 hours, 1 o'clock p.m., and it looks like it's on track to meet it. 
In Cranbrook, a drag freight needs to get to Nelson, but there's no schedule for it to run on. It will have to run extra. This means it will need to have a train order to authorize this movement. In addition, every train must have a clearance at its originating terminal denoting if it has any orders and what orders it needs to have, just in case an order was misplaced along the way. A good analogy I've heard is that the clearance is the packing slip for the train orders you have, just to make sure you have everything. The extra calls first. Dispatch, Cranbrook. Go ahead, Cranbrook. We've got an extra looking to get out of here, number 4072. It's headed west. Stand by, I will get the information from the daily lineup. Right, uh, 4072 extra X Cranbrook. Extra west. Crew, WHM, engines 4072, 8412, 4441. There's 24 cars and 1,260 feet. Cranbrook, 19R West, copy one. Ready to copy. Train order number seven, S-E-V-E-N, to the extra 4072, 4 not 72 at Cranbrook, C-R-A-N-B-R-O-O-K. Engine 4072, 4 not 72, run extra Cranbrook. C-R-A-N-B-R-O-O-K to Nelson. N-E-L-S-O-N. Order number seven, S-E-V-E-N to the extra 4072-4072 West W-E-S-T at Cranbrook, C-R-A-N-B-R-O-O-K. Engine 4072-4072 run extra Cranbrook, C-R-A-N-B-R-O-O-K to Nelson, N-E-L-S-O-N. Order complete at 12.29, p.m. Dispatcher MWH. Before they leave, Extra 4072 West needs to make sure there's nothing coming that has superiority over him. Getting right into it now. A train is superior to another train by right, class, or direction. Right is conferred by train order, class, and direction by the timetable. Right is superior to class or direction. Simply put, You've got extra trains and the classes of trains. An extra train is inferior to all classes of trains. So an extra train is inferior to a fourth class, but a fourth class is inferior to a third class, and so on and so forth. If you have two trains of the same class, say a second class train meeting a second class train, superiority is then conferred by the direction of travel. In the case of the Nelson and Boundary subdivisions, the westward direction is the inferior direction and the eastward direction is the superior direction. A train order can also be written to all trains involved, which gives one train right over another, and of course that supersedes everything in the timetable. Before they leave, Extra 4072 West needs to make sure there's nothing coming that has superiority over him. They consult the timetable. As a westward extra train, they are inferior to all other directions and classes. 984, a second class train, is the only train with right over them that might have arrived. All arriving and departing trains must sign the station register, so we check that first. Looks like 984 has arrived at 12.28 p.m. Number 90 also has right over us as a fourth class train, and is scheduled to arrive here at 14.35. 90 does have right over us, but that's a lot of time, and we might be able to meet it down the line. Assuming we make an average of 15 miles per hour, and it's downhill, so that shouldn't be an issue, it's 8.7 scale miles to Creston. Eh, round it up to 10 for easy math. We should be able to make that in 40 minutes. It's 12.32 now, at 40, so we can make it to Creston by 1.12. 90 is scheduled into Creston at 1.15. That's tight, but with our conservative calculation, we should be able to make it. They sign the register and throttle up. On their way out, they call the dispatcher to let them know. OS Cranbrook. Go ahead, Cranbrook. Extra 4072-4072 is out at 1234-1234 p.m. Okay, 4072-4072 is out at 1234. 
Meanwhile, due to the limitations of the phone system, 90 has been getting a busy signal in Nelson. Running on a scheduled time, he needs to get a clearance and any orders that might modify his time. He's not scheduled to depart for another half hour, but it's easiest to call ahead rather than be delayed by a busy dispatcher right at the departure time. He takes a minute to look through his paperwork once more, tries again, and gets through this time. Dispatch, Nelson. Go ahead, Nelson. Any orders for 90 today? It looks like he'll be on time. Perfect. No, no orders for 90. Okay. Uh, train 90. Nine knot here is Nelson N E L S O N at twelve forty one one two four one P M with nil orders. Okay, Nelson, twelve forty one P M dispatcher M W H. Having a pull test completed, all the crew of ninety needs to do is throttle up once the clock hits one. Back east, 4072 gets to Preston before 90, as expected. As the inferior train, they need to take the siding, so they set the switch and pull in. Preston is an order station. All order stations have a set of signal lights set by the dispatcher to show whether a train needs to pick up orders. Green, no orders. Red, orders. Either way, you're calling the dispatcher to OS. If you weren't stopping, you can OS on the fly, but you need to stop to receive orders. Looks like the order board for your direction is red, so you grab some forms and your pencil. OS Creston. Go ahead, Creston. Extra 4072, 4 knot 72 west is in at 103 p.m. 1 knot 3. 4072 west, 4 knot 72 WEST in Creston at 112. Uh, 19R west, copy 1. Ready to copy one, Creston. Order number eight, E-I-G-H-T, to the extra 4072, 4 west at Creston. C-R-E-S-T-O-N. Extra 4072, 4 west, W-E-S-T, meet Extra four not three one E A S T at Proctor P R O C T E R. Extra forty thirty one four not three one East E A S T takes siding at Proctor P R O C T E R. Okay, train order number eight E I G H T. To the extra 4072 West, extra 4072 WEST at Creston, C R E S T O N. Extra 4072 West, 4072 WEST, meet extra 4031 4031 East EAST at Proctor, P R O C T E R. Extra 4031 4031 East EAST, take siding at Proctor, P R O C T E R. Order complete. At 1.14.114 p.m. Dispatcher MWH. Alright, order complete at 1.14 p.m. 1.14 p.m. 
Preston clears the extra 4072 West 4072 WEST with order number 8 EIGHT at 115-115 p.m. Okay, Creston, 1.15 p.m. Dispatcher MWH. Ah, looks like there's a meet ahead. Two extras, the same class. The timetable shows that westward trains are inferior by direction, so we would take the siding. However, the order confers right over the eastward train, and so we shall take the main. 90 is a couple minutes late going by, but calls into the dispatcher without stopping to OS through. OS Creston. Ah, uh, go ahead, Creston. Number 90 is through at 1318, 1.18 p.m. Number 90 is through at 1318. 4072 is on its way as well, and will OS out. Extra 4072 West, 4072 WEST is out at 1.20, 13.20 p.m. Proctor, where the meet is happening, is not set up as an order station, so there's no need to OS. 4031 will be waiting in the siding, and we can go straight through to Nelson. On arrival at Nelson, we sign the register, OS in to complete our run, and 90 does the same in Cranbrook. OS Nelson. Extra 4072 is in at 1.49, 1.49 p.m. This run included the two most common forms of train orders on my railway. Form G, which runs an extra train, and Form... Oh, hell. It's in here somewhere. Form A, of course. It's Form A. Fixing meeting points for opposing trains. There are 19 different forms of train orders, all prescribed by the Uniform Code of Operating Rules. This gives a standard language to make sure that there are no misunderstandings when it comes to orders. I won't be going through all different types of train orders here because you would fall asleep but the dispatcher has a cheat sheet of them, and they can be found online if you want to peruse them. Also, during your downtime, if you want to read the rule book. So that is it for the bulk of timetable and train order operation, at least the version I run by. If you have a question, please leave it in the comments. I do read them all, even all of the ones on the cab ride video. Yes, I saw the bear! And, as always, like and subscribe so you don't miss anything for the wonderful world of the N-Scale Kootenai Division. See you at the station after the meet.